Hello ladies and gentlemen, Spirit of the Law here. Today I'm going to be looking at the secret attack bonuses in Age of Empires 2 against infantry. Unlike pikes for cavalry and skirmishers for archers, there isn't an immediately obvious cheap answer to infantry in most situations, so countering them involves either using a lot of gold or knowing some of these secret bonuses and being able to use them. I'll be coming out with a similar video for other unit types if you want and if you guys find that this video is helpful. So for the most part, these are going to confirm conventional wisdom and it's not going to have huge surprises. But on the other hand, it is nice to know exactly how these things work and some of these might surprise you. I do find that the game does a good job of telling you which units get bonuses against which, but I've always found it never tells you exactly how much that bonus is. For example, you might say pikes have an attack bonus versus cavalry, but you don't really know how that works. Is it like Pokemon where you have a damage multiplier? So super effective is times two damage, or is this a constant value that's added to the attack? They never really tell you, but I will in this video. I also want to thank Jepsto on the Steam community and Net Angels Clan for doing a lot of the legwork in finding these numbers out. The way you find out these attack bonuses is by testing units against each other and seeing how much damage an attack does and compare it to the unit's attack and the defense. That takes a whole lot of time, so thanks to those people who did a lot of that work that we can now benefit from. Without further ado though, let's get into it. these numbers jive with my own tests, so I'm fairly confident that these numbers are right, but there may be some slight differences between versions or the odd mistake. So try to avoid nitpicking, but if you know of one that's wrong, then you're welcome to leave a comment and correct the mistake. So now I'm going to do the bonuses by unit and in terms of increasing bonuses. There are some units that get a bonus versus all infantry, but I'm going to be doing those last to put those into perspective. So I'm talking about the Hand Cannoneer, the Jaguar Warrior, and the Cataphract. Don't worry, we'll get to those. To answer the question earlier about how does the attack bonus work, it's actually not a multiplier, it is in fact an extra amount of damage that's added on. So it'll be the regular damage that they do, maybe 5 or 8 attack, plus something else if it's against the particular kind of unit. This is enough with my exposition though, so let's get this started. Let's begin with the Eagle Warriors. First, let's look at what units get a plus 2 attack, so just a slight bonus, but it is good to know. The units to get plus two attack versus the Eagle Warriors are the Plumed Archers and Elite Plumed Archers, the Men at Arms, the Huskarl, the Samurai, interestingly enough, the Wode Raider, and the Berserker. Units to get plus three attack versus the Eagle Warriors are the Elite Berserker, the Elite Wode Raider, and the Elite Huskarl. Notice that the Elite unit not only has better stats, but actually the hidden bonuses increase too. We'll find this is a common theme in terms of the hidden bonuses. So if you look at the stats of the elite unit versus the regular unique unit, you might say, well, I'm not really getting very much for what I'm paying, but there might actually be some hidden benefits in there, especially if you're using the unit against the type that it was designed to. Moving up now to the plus four attack versus Eagle Warriors, we have the Teutonic Knights and the Long Swordsman. Stepping it up a little bit more to the plus six attack, we have the Two-Handed Swordsman and the Champion. This supports conventional wisdom that a champion or two-handed swordsman is a very good counter to the Eagle Warrior. It's not just because the Eagle Warrior has poor melee armor and costs a lot more gold than the champion. The champion actually gets a huge bonus. Moving on to the spearmen now. All Mangadai, the Mongol unique unit, get plus one attack. Although if you have Parthian tactics as well, which often they will by the Imperial Age, it'll be plus three attack. Moving on to the plus two attack. This includes the Longbowman, the Chukonu, and the Cavalry Archer. We'll notice the theme here that a lot of Archer type units are very good against Spearmen. Moving on to the plus three attack now, all Skirmishers, Archers, Crossmen, Arbalests, Plumed Archers, all get plus three attack. And the Elite Plumed Archer actually gets plus four. This supports the conventional wisdom that Archers are good against Spearmen. One explanation is that the archers can get in a few shots on the spearmen before the spearmen reaches them, but we can see here with the hidden bonuses that they're actually getting extra attack as well. Both of those factors together are what contribute to the archers being so good against spearmen. Now we get to one of the units that a lot of people find difficult to counter, which is uh, this whole swordsman line right up to champion. As we might expect, there's no good hard counter specifically to the swordsman. 
The closest thing there is, is the Plumed Archer, which gets plus one attack, and the Elite Plumed Archer, which does plus two attack. This isn't taking into account the units that have bonuses versus all infantry. I'm merely pointing out that there's no good counter to just swordsmen. So the way that you approach a swordsman is going to be with one of those units that's just good against all infantry. I haven't found any mention of an archer bonus against the swordsman line. So in that case, using archers against swordsmen, it probably does just come down to the extra few shots that you're able to get. Overall though, it doesn't look like the ideal counter. That being said, I know one popular counter that comes to mind is to use scorpions against the swordsman line which is effective not because of any extra hidden bonus, but just because the scorpions are awesome. Bear in mind that scorpions are expensive and easy to take out with cavalry and onagers if you're going to use that as your tactic against the swordsman line. Okay, so now we get to the bonus versus infantry unique units. Under this category, all we have really is the samurai, and the samurai gets a huge bonus, the biggest one we've seen yet. The samurai have plus 10 attack versus unique infantry, and the elite samurai is plus 12 attack versus infantry. You could compare this to the size of the bonus that spearmen get against cavalry. It's that big. This also explains why samurai can be cost effective against Teutonic Knights. That 10 melee armor of elite Teutonic Knights is basically nullified by the bonus that the samurai gets against them. Now we move on to the units that I discussed before, which have the bonuses versus all infantry. Now we come to the most amusing that I find on this whole list, which is that throwing axemen get plus one attack versus infantry, and elite throwing axemen get plus two. You can't say that the game developers weren't meticulous in balancing the game. Now we come to the unit that I know most of you have been yelling at the screen the whole time, which is the hand cannoneer. The hand cannoneer is often described as the perfect counter to infantry. It's thought of as the equivalent for infantry of the pikemen to the cavalry and the skirmisher to the archer. The only problem is that it costs so much gold, and you have to wait until the Imperial Age to get it. Plus, a few civilizations don't even have access to the Hand Cannoneer. I'm thinking of Mayans, Aztecs, Incas, and Britons for that. That being said, it may interest you to know that the Hand Cannoneer has a plus 10 attack versus all infantry. So that 17 attack that it looks like the Hand Cannoneer has is actually 27 against champions. Jaguar Warriors and Elite Jaguar Warriors are similar with their plus 10 attack versus infantry. That one shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Last unit we're going to talk about is the Cataphract. Now the basic Cataphract has plus 9 attack versus infantry, but when you make it Elite, not only does its attack and health increase anyway because you're upgrading it to Elite, but it also gets a plus 12 hidden bonus versus infantry. This is why Cataphracts are able to hold their own against spear line units. So that's all of them. Like I said, a couple might be wrong, but it's pretty good as far as I can tell. The main takeaway is to believe conventional wisdom that archers and hand cannoneers are great against spearmen and infantry. Even if the stats don't look like it, there's a lot of hidden stuff in Age of Empires. Skirmishers also get a bonus versus spearmen, which some people don't know, but is pretty good information to have. So hopefully this gives you another trick in your repertoire or another tool in your toolbox, as they say. I've been Spirit of the Law, thanks for watching, and if you have interest in other ones for different types of units, just leave me a comment and let me know what other types you want me to do. See you next time.